Alors oui, là concrètement, je suis en Inde. Et c'est un petit peu l'histoire que j'ai envie de te raconter dans cette vidéo. Mais avant ça, il faut que je t'explique comment j'en suis arrivé ici. Et pour ça, il faut que je te donne un petit peu de contexte. En fait, au mois d'octobre dernier, je suis parti deux mois en Asie. Et c'est au Cambodge que j'ai passé le plus de temps. J'ai fait du volontariat sur une île, j'ai rencontré plein de gens cool et en plus j'ai appris à plonger. Moi je vivais ici, dans ce bungalow. Au bout de deux semaines, j'ai le droit à deux nouvelles colocataires. Kate et Martha, deux anglais super sympas, mais un petit peu folles. Alors en plus de partager le même toit, il s'avère qu'on avait des cours de plongée en commun. Du coup, on passait beaucoup de temps ensemble et on a très vite sympathisé. Ah, alors ça c'était sur le bateau, avec Kate et Martha. Et le mec allongé là, il est aussi super important. Il s'appelle Panda, c'est notre moniteur de plongée. Et il est indien. C'est bon, tu vois le truc arriver là le soir sur l'île, le plus bel endroit, c'était le ponton, parce que tu pouvais voir les étoiles, mais tu peux aussi voir la bioluminescence dans l'eau, créée par les planctons. Et un de ces soirs, on était sur le ponton, et qu'on buvait du chocolat chaud, bien sûr. Panda nous a demandé ce qu'on allait faire ces prochains temps. Et les filles ont naturellement répondu qu'elles partaient en Inde, puisque c'était prévu pour la suite de leur voyage, et on s'est dit que ce serait une bonne idée de tous se retrouver là-bas. Du coup, on m'a demandé ce que j'en pensais, et je crois que j'ai répondu que ce serait plutôt cool. Résultat, en rentrant chez moi en France, je fais deux recherches sur mon ordinateur, la première pour trouver des vols pas chers à destination de l'Inde, et la deuxième pour trouver le site internet qui permet de créer son visa. Et voilà que je me retrouve à Francfort, mardi 7 février 2017, 21h34, à bord d'un Boeing 787 Dreamliner de Air India, vol i 120 à destination de Delhi. Alors Delhi n'est qu'une correspondance, parce en fait le but du voyage c'est de visiter la partie sud-ouest de l'Inde. Et tout commence à Bangalore, d'ailleurs c'est la maman de Panda qui nous accueille ce soir, chez elle, Kate, Martha et moi. Le moniteur de plongée Promis on le retrouve plus tard. Parce qu'en fait maintenant ils bossent dans la région de Goa, là où on termine notre voyage. Et entre les deux, je sais pas ce qui va se passer. Welcome to Bangalore International Airport, where the outside reported temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. Please remain seated and do not open the overhead bins until the seatbelt sign is switched off. On behalf of Air India, a member of Star Alliance, Captain Gaurav Nehru and the crew, we take this opportunity to thank you for making Air India the airline of your choice. We look forward to the pleasure of flying you again. Thank you. Namaskar. Jai Hind. Alors ça faisait déjà un petit moment que je m'étais mis en tête de filmer nos aventures. Malheureusement, mettre de la musique sur des belles images, ça me suffisait pas. Du coup, j'ai demandé à Kate et Martha de m'aider. Et c'est ce qu'elles ont fait. Je leur ai demandé de partager leur vision du voyage, leurs expériences. Et pour cette première, c'est Martha qui s'y colle. Ok. So. Um, me and Kate flew from Bangkok to Bangalore with a six hour wait in Calcutta on the 7th of February. So we landed in Bangalore about one o'clock in the morning. We spent six hours trying to find a comfortable position and failing. And then we got a taxi to Panda, Panda's mum's house. We were so lucky um, to be able to stay with her because we'd booked our flights before we even came to Cambodia. And he, he was like, whoa, you can stay with my mum. Like, whoa. So we stayed with, We're staying with his mum, and then we went to the botanical gardens, which were really cool. Loads of birds of prey flying around, and we and we just sat on a bench and read our books, and it was really nice and relaxing. Then we went back to Panda's mum's and got some delicious food. She made us some delicious food, and then we were awaiting your arrival. Uh, you arrived about half nine. That was the first time we'd seen each other since. Cambodia, so I was like, whoa, hey, we're in, we're in India, how did this happen? And the next day, we went to Tibu Sultan's uh, summer palace, which was very beautiful. And there was all this commotion happening near where I'd left Kate and Gautier. And I was like, well, what's happening? Is there some performance on the, on the lawn that I didn't know about? And I, it was just a huge group of people wanting selfies with the Kate and Gautier. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wanted pictures as soon as one phone had finished there, someone handed another phone and there was this big group of people and it was really funny. It was really funny. We went back to Panda's mum's and had some more delicious food. So if I could say to Panda's mum, it would be Namaste. Thank you so much for having us and for being so welcoming and Uh, helpful and lovely and ah, oh, it was 
wonderful experience and I could I'd love to. I, well, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm going to bring my mum and I'm going to stay for a month and you can teach me how to cook. Thank you so much. Namaste. And then, did we leave the day after that? Yeah. We left and we were getting the train to Mysore, which is where we are now. And this was our first train experience. We thought we'd miss the train because we were running we were running pretty late. So the train was at 11.35. We finally got some tickets just before the train was leaving. We had our bags and we were like, go, 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 run! And we were running, running, running through the train station. And then we ran and we kept running. Saw the train on platform eight, which was really far away. And I saw the clock saying 11.33 and I was like, ah, we didn't miss it. And then we sat in the station for about 20 minutes because it wasn't leaving, but. Oh well, they got our heart, heartbeats going. The train was moving quite slowly at first. They, they didn't shut the doors. There was a man sat here. funny conversations with people, really nice people and was, this really one nice, really nice guy uh, gave us loads of, wrote down loads of um, suggestions of things we should do in Mysore. I love the train, I love trains, I really, really love trains. And then we arrived in Mysore, Mysore is a great place, so great, the people are so friendly. Alors Martin n'a pas tort, Misor est vraiment magnifique. C'est une vraie bouffée d'air pur après Bangalore et ses 8 millions d'habitants. Du coup on s'est laissé prendre par le rythme, que ce soit en marchant ou en tuk-tuk. On a pris le temps de découvrir ce que la ville avait à nous offrir. to the cinema, saw a Bollywood film, which was a great experience. It was fantastic. So here's what I think the, f the film was about. We looked up the poster for the film. There was four love stories going on set. And then on our second day, and then we walked to the market and bought all this really nice fresh fruit. And then we sat in the, the square with, a, with, a, with some knives and bowls, chopping up all the fruit and making these fruit salads. And people were very interested in that. That was nice, delicious fruit. And then we went to the palace, which is an amazing place. It's got all these beautiful domes and golden domes. And every Sunday and national holiday, they completely illuminate the outsides. 
I'm excited. It's going to look really, really cool. Alors après cette soirée magnifique, on est tous rentrés, on est tous allés se coucher, et tout le monde a fait de beaux rêves. Tout le monde Enfin, tout le monde sauf moi. J'ai le droit à mon premier rendez-vous raté avec la nourriture indienne. Un vrai plaisir avant un réveil matinal. Although Gautier was a bit ill, so it wasn't good. <laughs> We got up early on Monday morning. We'd booked a bus to Uti the night before, so we just had to get to the bus station. And then we got on the bus and there was nowhere to put our bags. So we had to sit at the back because there was a little bit of space to put our bags at the back. Um, but, <laughs> but the back of the bus is the bumpiest part of the bus, of course. And the last part of the journey was really, really, really beautiful. And the road was windy and just getting higher and higher in the mountains. It was really beautiful. And then we arrived in Uti at the bus station. And the town's a bit shabby and not not that nice but we weren't staying in the town so it didn't matter and it was really nice to be out in the tea plantations and um the view the view is just beautiful the sun was shining martha <laughs> martha stood on a cow pat and it <laughs> She was wearing sandals and it went all in her foot and it was just disgusting. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> she says it felt nice and, and to solve this problem, all she did was put socks on. <laughs> nothing to see, nothing to see. <laughs> and she left the sandals, she left her feet to clean her feet. She didn't clean her feet until the evening and left her sandals for two days. <laughs> Uh, Gotcha was feeling better, but it was really cloudy. <laughs> and we're like, oh no, what are we gonna do? We got on the public bus, which was fun. And then we got to Charing Cross in, in an Uti <laughs> and got out and just basically wandered all the way through the town. Alors, c'est un petit peu triste à dire, mais ce qu'on a préféré dans Outi, c'est quand on est reparti. Non pas qu'on n'a pas du tout aimé la ville, mais Outi notamment connu pour son petit train à vapeur, construit en 1908. Il redescend toute la montagne et il traverse des paysages absolument magnifiques. Nil, Nilgiri Tea Express, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> But that doesn't go faster than 30 km an hour, is its maximum speed. Sometimes 
sometimes it would stop and there'd be a for us snacks and stuff and loads of monkeys would just come and start trying to steal people's snacks and people were throwing food out of the train and there was some baby monkeys on their mums and it was really cute and some people just do a day trip from Uti where they go on the train to Kuna and then the train back but after Kuna was the most beautiful part like you, you, the, the mountains open out and you can you can see like out into like I don't, I don't know maybe it's Convertard that you can see I don't know and you can see just hill after hill after hill going up but then the other way is you can see the flat the flat landscape outside the Western Ghats and it was really really beautiful it's just amazing everyone has to do it <laughs> And then, but yeah, when we got to the last station, we had to get a bus to Con Convertar, where we had a place booked. And then we got to the room, and it was a twin room, and we were like, but what about this other bed? And they were really small beds as well. And then, well, they told us to just sit down, and then they made a bed on the floor, but it was a tiny bed. Ugh. And then we went down to complain about it, and they were like, oh, you have to pay this much more for a proper triple room. So I was just like, oh. So we just went out for food, and then when we came back, we just went straight to bed. Uh, <laughs> it's great. Just what we were expecting. <laughs> I mean, I love sleeping on the floor, so it's all right. <laughs> so we checked the bus time to Manat, and there was one at 8.15. We, we, when we were getting on the bus, it kept trying to leave before 8.15 and we were trying to get all our bags on. Oh yeah, so when we were in Zostal, um, when we, the day we were leaving, some guys had arrived and they said, are you going to Manar the day after tomorrow? And we were like, yeah. He's like, do you want to take our booking at this place? Because we're not going and we've already paid, so if you can give us some money for it, that would be great. But they paid... 5,500 rupees. We weren't gonna pay because we can't afford that much. But he was like, it's fine, just give me give me what you want. So we gave him 3,000. He said it was a really nice place. It had really good reviews. It was in a tent. It included breakfast, tea, bonfire, transport to the place. But you had to call them and we don't have an Indian number. So we were calling from Gotia's phone. We thought he wanted us to go to a bus station in Old Munar. So we did that and we told them that was where we were and he was like, oh, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. And we ended up waiting there for like three hours and we were just like, what's going on? So eventually we moved, but I think we were still in the wrong place because we eventually found the Jeep where we originally were. And oh, it was so annoying. So when we arrived, we were really pissed off and we met um, the two guys that we'd met at Zostal. And they were like, oh, come quick. There's a good sunset spot. So we just checked in quickly, dumped our bags and then went to the sunset spot. on the top of the mountain the sun was going down you could see like more than 180 degrees around like we're on the edge of a rock it was really beautiful we got too cold and then the sun went behind a cloud so we went back oh yeah in the morning we woke up and we'd all left our shoes outside the tent, but all but one flip-flop had gone. Exhibit A. Exhibit B. Exhibit C. What happened to our shoes? <laughs> <laughs> well, they all went missing in the night. We found them scattered, like fallen soldiers around the tent. Some of them destroyed. Some of them missing. My waterproof has been shredded! But it's okay, because the view is really nice. <laughs> and 
and we don't really know what happened, but the people at the um, resort were really unhelpful. So we're going to give them a really bad review. Enfin bon, après ça, j'étais forcément un petit peu de mauvaise humeur et j'ai pas vraiment pu profiter du trek offert par le resort. <rire> enfin, un trek. C'était pas vraiment un trek, c'était euh, plus un shooting photo. C'est-à-dire qu'il y avait un employé d'hôtel qui nous arrêtait tous les 10 mètres et qui nous disait comment prendre la pause. Ouais, c'est un petit peu dommage. Surtout que la vue était très très belle. Alors à propos de belle vue, tu, tu vois celle-là Ouais, ben bah, j'aurais pas voulu que tu la vois. Parce qu'en fait, c'est à cet endroit-là, et à ce moment précis, que j'ai perdu le micro sur ma caméra. Bon allez, je, je te la refais vite fait. Alors, pour avoir une belle vue comme ça, Bibi se place là, juste ici, au bord de la route. Il se dit que c'est joli beau et qu'il filmerait bien. Donc pour ça, il prend son petit sac avec sa caméra à l'intérieur. Alors, pour information, sur la caméra de Bibi, très joliment représentée ici d'ailleurs, le micro se situe là, juste au-dessus de l'objectif. Donc à ce moment précis où Bibi ouvre son petit sac pour faire de belles images, le micro décide d'avoir une vie totalement autonome et se dirige vers la liberté en plongeant directement dans le lac. Voilà. Donc c'est-à-dire que Bibi avait déjà une très mauvaise journée puisqu'il avait perdu ses chaussures le matin même. Avant, il faisait la gueule. Et que maintenant, il fait vraiment la gueule, tu vois. Et qu'est-ce qu'on retient de tout ça Bah, Kaita fait sa lessive. Je ne sais pas. Je ne fais pas. Où est le bambou ce qui est cool, c'est qu'en voyage, tu n'auras jamais bloqué sur tes émotions. Et tu retrouves très rapidement le sourire. Du coup, le lendemain, on s'est mis en tête de faire un trek. Mais un vrai cette fois-ci. We left Muna and got the bus to Madurai. And now we're in Madurai. We arrived in Madurai in the afternoon. We got we got a hotel next to the bus station. Funny hotel with three three beds. We went on a hunt to try and find a bottle of beer unsuccessfully. Kate, Kate and Gautier spent a long time re wrestling with the, the internet to try and order a, a Domino's. <laughs> we had to call in a, our friend Panda ch to help us. How's the pizza, guys? And then today, we got up nice and early. I went to the SRI space, M-E-E-N-A, K S H I Mina Mina How do you say it? Stream in Akshi Temple, which really was incredible. It was really, really amazing. So you're kind of walking along these kind of just normal shops, a little bit, little bit run down, kind of norm, very normal looking street, and then suddenly there's this huge temple. There's all multicolored and really intricate designs and. And then you walk, you go through into the entrance, and all the ceilings painted these amazing, really bright, vibrant colours. Kind of lots of flowery, circularly, spirally, um, beautiful patterns on the on the ceiling. Yeah, and you walk around, and certain areas you can only go if you're Hindu. Um, but it's which I think is really good because it's a religious religious site and it's not just for tourists. It was really very amazing. I felt really good.
Tac <rire> Alors après avoir passé près d'une demi-journée dans le temple, on a décidé d'aller faire un petit tour au marché couvert, juste en face. Et d'ailleurs c'était l'occasion de découvrir les tailleurs indiens qui travaillent au milieu du marché, juste là devant toi comme ça. Et en fait ils sont installés juste en face des étals qui te permettent d'acheter ton tissu. And now we're outside the Gandhi Museum. Let's go. What is that? What is that? The Gandhi Museum. Okay, this is the Gandhi Museum. Okay. What is that? What is that? A T-Rex. <laughs> T-Rex. So, let me try again. What is that? What is that? Museum. This is the Gandhi Museum. <laughs> What is that? A T-Rex. A T-Rex. <laughs> Why? A jeu de flou. Boop. <laughs> This tea is really nice. nice early night before our trekking the next day. So Martha left first because she had to get there an hour earlier than me and Gotcha. We realized we needed to give the key to the guy otherwise Martha wouldn't be able to get back in because me and Gotcha were staying overnight. So we ended up leaving the key under Martha's pillow but then we were like... Alors oui, faire un interview à la tombée de la nuit dans une gare c'est peut-être pas ce qu'il y a de plus malin. Là en fait on est à Cochine et il y a une voix qui arrête pas de nous interrompre, il est 19h06 et on est en train de nuit pour Gokana dans moins d'une heure. Et le pire dans tout ça, c'est qu'on n'a pas encore mangé. Alors pour ceux qui se demandent, Gokana, ça ressemble à ça. Enfin bon, je vais te la refaire. Alors ce matin là on a dû se lever un petit peu tôt parce qu'on voulait découvrir la réserve naturelle de Périllard. Martha est partie de son côté et Kate et moi d'un autre. Du coup, on a pris un bon petit déj et c'était parti. Then we were just at the start of the tiger trek and we were meeting the other people that were going on the trek with us. There was a French guy who immediately started talking to him in French and he was called Alex and he was a really nice, interesting guy and there was a Swedish man and his son and his son was really, really good at spotting birds and identifying them. So the guides stopped us because they could hear that the elephants were coming. It was really, really loud and they were getting closer and, and you kind of, your heart starts going a bit like, But they kind of went past us, so we didn't really see, like. We kind of saw movement, but we didn't see them. But it was really amazing um, and exciting. Yeah, and then after that, we carried on the trek. And then. I see some bamboo rafts with some people on in, in the distance and I was like oh uh, I wonder if it's Martha because she's doing she was doing the bamboo rafting so I was like maybe she's on one of them and I couldn't really see from a distance whether she was but I saw a smallish person with light hair in the back of one I was like mm, that could be her that's so funny <laughs> 
they stopped for a little bit and we had a little chat. Oh, it's uh, my only dark t-shirt. Yeah, me too. It's really hot. It's really hot. It's so hot. It's horrible. So that was nice to see her. We went on an afternoon trek, which was really nice. <laughs> elephants really close up and we were getting closer and closer. So special to see them in the wild, no fences and we weren't in a jeep and we were just, you know, we were, we were vulnerable, you know, like they decided to charge us. But we did have a guy with a gun but there's not that much we could have done about it. When we get back, we get tea and biscuits, which is really nice. And then we went for a swim in the lake as the sun was going down. And the lake has like, because it was created by a dam, there's loads of dead trees in it. And it looks really cool. It's really refreshing after all that sweaty trekking. <laughs> and then in the morning, we managed to get up quite early. Um, but we couldn't really see the sunrise anyway, but the light was really beautiful and there was this mist all like forming on top of the lake. It looked amazing. Like, I uh, can't even describe it, but it was really cool. And then we had some snacks and then went on our morning trek. So we got a tuk-tuk with Alex. His next destination was Alipi, just like us. When we were on the way to this guest house, Alex had spotted some people he'd met, I don't even know where, somewhere else. And he wasn't even, didn't even know they were in Alipay, but he just spotted them on the street. He chatted to them and, and then messaged them about um, whether they wanted to come on the boat with us. Um, and at, they didn't reply at first the morning. He had a message from them saying that they wanted to come. We were sat on the boat in the lake. Out of the corner of my eye, I see this boat in the distance, and it had this big white box on it. And then I thought, is that, is that, is that an ice cream boat? And, and by God, it was. And we all got a, like a Cornetto type ice cream, and it was great. Didn't think that was that, that you get ice cream in the middle of the way.
try to go under a bridge, but we just fit under. And we, we were out for magic hour. Is it called magic hour? Golden hour. Ha happy hour. Magic hour. Magic hour. Captain was telling us, oh, this is my special place. This is my secret place. Because the th nice thing about being on the small boat was that you could go on to all these little, little channels. We got off the boat and went for a little walk. What's your name? My name is Nana. Nana. Your name is good. <laughs> but not ours. <laughs> And then the sun was coming down and we were back out onto the big, bigger walk. We had some nice music playing. It, it was, um, we were living the life. It was really good. Alors après ça, on a passé une bonne dernière journée à l'épée, à profiter de la plage. Vers 17h, on a pris le train avec Alex pour aller à Cochine. Alors normalement, si t'as la mémoire pas trop courte, Cochine, ça doit te rappeler quelque chose. Oui, c'est là où on a essayé de faire un interview avec Kate au milieu d'une gare. Alors si on reprend un petit peu l'ordre chronologique, on se rappelle qu'on était à Kumili, où on a fait du trek. Ensuite, on s'est retrouvé à l'épée, à faire du bateau. Et là, on vient tout juste de rejoindre Cochine en train. On dit au revoir à Alex et on s'apprête à prendre un train de nuit, cette fois-ci, pour aller à Gokana. Pour rappel, Gokana, c'est ça. Alors un train de nuit, ça se passe comment Tu arrives, tu repères ta place, comme dans tous les trains jusqu'ici, tu prépares ton petit lit, tu te fais dessiner sur le pied par un voyageur quelconque, et tu t'endors comme un gros tas, en prenant soin de n'utiliser qu'une seule boule caisse, parce que tu as perdu la deuxième. Et voilà, c'est magique, après 12 heures de voyage, tu arrives à destination super frais, parce que t'es mal organisé et que t'as pas eu le temps de prendre une douche avant le départ. And we got onto the beach and we, we found like the first place we got to with some bungalows on the beach. Turns out it's where all the people that get kicked out of all the other uh, accommodation go, so there's quite a strange vibe, but it was fine. <laughs> it's nice, really peaceful beach. Lots of people were telling us about this festival that was happening in Gokana town. And we went and oh boy my god we went. It was so it was so good. We didn't know what the festival was and then we just kind of followed the crowds and we got onto the main street and there were people lining up along the sides of the street and then we looked up and saw these huge kind of formations. And it was like taller than a two-story building. And it was like a big, a big pear shape on some kind of other structure. And there, were, there was a little window and you could see people inside. And the top bit was made out of loads of colorful flags. And the streets were mad, it was really noisy. Everyone was selling bananas. We didn't know why. We arrived at a good time, we managed to find a bit of shade. Then it starts to move.
be it. You should, you'd have to go. People were dancing. People were dressed up as other Hindu gods. Everyone was very sweaty. There were bananas everywhere. Um, it was great. The festival happens every year. It's been going for five or six hundred years. We also were so lucky to go on that day, just by chance. Then we walked down to Gokana Beach and there was a 12-year-old boy giving someone a tattoo on the beach with a real tattoo gun. That was fun, fun to watch. Alors MP, ça ressemble à ça. Si je cherchais un petit peu à te résumer le truc, ça serait un mélange entre le Grand Canyon, des ruines grecques et les temples d'Ankor au Cambodge. MP, c'est 400 temples sur 30 km. Alors on a essayé de tout faire, mais c'était pas possible. This landscape is just insane. It looks like another, another planet. A really crazy, beautiful place. And yeah, and then we got up nice and early this morning. Six o'clock alarm. It's so hot here. We wanted to be able to do stuff before it got too hot. We rented bicycles. Le troisième jour à Ampi, on a rencontré Claire, une Anglaise super sympa qui nous a fait découvrir son paradis perdu. Après 5 km en tuk-tuk et une bonne demi-heure de marche à travers une bananeraie et un désert de roche, on est arrivé ici. On a passé une bonne partie de la journée à bronzer et à essayer de se rafraîchir malgré le soleil de plomb. 
En fin d'après-midi, on a pris un tuk-tuk avec des pigeons et un bus de nuit sans pigeons mais avec des couchettes pour aller à Goa, ultime étape de notre parcours. Pour être tout à fait franc, à Goa, on n'a pas fait grand-chose. On s'est surtout baigné, que ce soit à la plage ou à la piscine du lieu de travail de notre pote Panda. Ah oui, Panda, c'est lui. Tu te souviens, c'est notre prof de plongée qu'on n'a pas vu depuis trois mois. Ah oui, et ça c'est Vida, une étudiante cambodgienne qui était aussi avec nous sur l'île. Bon, on pouvait pas venir à Goa retrouver notre pote moniteur de plongée sans aller plonger. Du coup, on a pris un bateau et on allait plonger sur une épave. Et voilà, c'est sur ce dernier coucher de soleil que se termine notre mois d'aventure en Inde. Mais comme toute bonne aventure, il faut un épilogue. I've just had the most amazing time. I'm really sad that I'm going home. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be weird because well, I've been traveling with Kate for for four months, but this month in India has been like a different chapter of that. And now I'm moving on to a different chapter because I'm not going home yet. I've loved everything, every minute of it. Like it's been a really, really good month. I never felt like we were trying to do too much. India is just so incredible. It turns out that India has a lot to offer. There's nothing that we've done that I haven't liked doing. And the only thing that I really wanted to see that I haven't seen is a tiger. <laughs> There's nothing I really regret. I wouldn't order the creamy curry in Kumali. <laughs> I think a lot of people have this same perception of India. I thought that traveling on public transport would be dangerous or not a good idea, and it's, it was really good, really, really cheap. Some of my favorite times have been on public transport. I've learned that people should be brave and come to India because it's amazing. Fuck you, panda. <laughs> I, bet, I bet Kate said, when you asked this question, you're a dick. <laughs> you are a dick, but we love you. <laughs> no, I want to say thank you for setting up for us to stay at your mum's. And that was the best start that we could have had to in our India trip, I think. 
Thanks for showing us Gerla. Oh, and thanks for teaching us how to dive and taking us into this amazing place. I hope to see you again soon, even if you are being an ass and trying to ignore me right now. Thank you for putting up with me <laughs> for four months. I don't know how we didn't kill each other. It's been really great. Thank you for letting me come on your trip. I hope I wasn't too much of a pain in the ass. And couldn't think of anyone who I could have been, had such a good time with. We work well together. Something I really like about you is that you're always excited about things and it's infectious, makes you fun to be around. Yeah, I would definitely travel with her again. We're already planning our trip to Cuba. You're a really good travel buddy. Moi, j'adorais l'Inde pour ce que j'en ai vu, mais j'ai surtout adoré le filmer. Et mes mots de la fin, ce serait 